everyone, welcome to another version of Power365's Power Shorts. On this video, we're going to take a look at some of the functionality within Power Apps that's hugely underutilized for large applications, and it's called the Select function. Now, I would normally build this live, but this one's going to be much easier to demo based on the functionality that we're going to walk through. To set the scene, what we're looking at here on the screen now is, an, is a resource management app. The resources that we're talking about at the moment will be desks. Now, from a user's perspective, they've got the ability to click through into a specific building and look at a floor plan. That floor plan will then allow them to zoom in and they'd be able to select a desk if they wanted to. They'd also be able to move through the date and based on the desk that they then select, it would allow them to click through into a different screen, pulling all the information about that desk and allow them to book in. So let's break that open because the scenario here is we've only got four desks, but there's a chance that we might have 100 desks, 150 desks, um, and that can build and build and build. Now, if we place the scenario around the idea that if we were to have a need for the desk to highlight whether it's reserved for somebody or whether it's reserved for somebody else, or even whether the desk is booked, all of these different scenarios would ultimately mean that the user needs to be blocked from booking that desk based on the choices they're making. Now, that's okay when we've got four desks, but if we've got 100 desks and all of a sudden we need to then update that code to say, well, I also now need a scenario in which that if they've booked a desk within the last 24 hours, they're not allowed to book another one, we would need to update the code on all 100 buttons. So let's break open what's going on here. We've got some buttons here on which we've got some code. Now the code here that we've got is very, very simple. There's a button shaped in a circle and the button allows us to update a local variable, a context variable with the selected seat they're looking at, just saying self.text. What it's then doing is it's using this select function and the select function is selecting a button in the background called button seat click. So let's have a look at that one, which is down here. On that button seat click, we have a look at this code. We're basically now breaking open some of the collections that we've got going on in this app. Now to again set some scenario, we have a collection in the background that is looking at all of the selected, all of the submitted seats on the date and time that we're on. And we've also got some collections in the background that are managing the reserved and any reserved seats for me. Now based on the idea that we've now got a variable placed because they've selected a specific seat, if I select one, this goes into a variable. And we're now saying that if that variable is in these collections, then it will allow me to notify whether it's booked with a notification. If I am in a, a collection that says I've already got something booked on that day, then it will also tell me I already have a seat booked. If that seat that I've selected is reserved and it's in our reserved list and it's not in my reserved list, then it would tell me that the seat is reserved or it would allow me to go through and book that seat. So looking at some of those scenarios, what I've got here, if I click number two, it's going to tell me I've already booked a seat. Likewise, if I move forward and click number two, it's going to tell me this seat is reserved. If I go back and I look at the red one and I click it, it says this seat is already booked. And if I try the green one, it's going to tell me I've already got a seat booked for this date. Now, all we're doing there is we're utilizing one piece of code on the button or two pieces of code, a variable and a select, which would ultimately allow me, if we've got more desks, to go Control-C, Control-V. And I've now got desk five. The reason I don't have desk five there is because desk five is not turned on in the background. But let's pretend this is now desk three again. For purpose of demonstration, pretend it's five. And then I've got another one of those, and another one of those, and another one of those, and another one of those. What this allows me to do is very quickly scale up or scale down without changing any code whatsoever. Because if we think about what would happen normally, all of this code would probably need to be on each individual button. And if I was to do that and place that here, I would then need to go into here and do the same, and into here and do the same, and into here and do the same. And if the scenario then changed and they said, okay, well, we don't now need to know whether that person has got seat booked for that date. Well, I can come in here and I can remove that code. But I would then need to remove that code on every other button. So I'd now need to copy and paste and go to this one and go to this one and go to this one. Whereas in the scenario using a select function, what I can do instead is I can choose the button seat, click, and then I can amend the code here and change it. And now the code works for all of them. So this will now allow me to book another seat on that day because all of the code on every single button has been updated 
based on the idea we're updating it from one place. So I highly recommend you look into this function. If you've got any questions, leave them in the comments. Happy to paste some of this code in. You can obviously see we're also doing other things here where we've got switch statements on colors based on the specific items. Um, but this is really, really powerful stuff and we thought we'd just give you a quick overview. Thank you so much.